Hey, it's Sarah. Hope you're doing well. That I would just walk and talk with you for September 15th. Charles Spurgeon, morning and evening. Morning. He is not afraid of bad news. Psalms 112.7 Christian, you ought not to be afraid of the arrival of bad news, because if you are distressed by such, you are no different from other men. They do not have your God to run to. They have never proved his faithfulness as you have done. And it's no wonder if they've bowed down with alarm and cowed with fear. But you profess to be of another spirit. You have been born again to a living hope, and your heart lives in heaven and not on earthly things. If you are seen to be distracted as other men, what is the value of that grace that you profess to have received? Where is the dignity of that new nature that you claim to possess? Again, if you should be filled with alarm like others, you would no doubt be led into the sins so common to them under trying circumstances. The ungodly, when they are overtaken by bad news, rebel against God, and they murmur and maintain that God has dealt harshly with them. Will you fall into that same sin? Will you provoke the Lord as they do? Moreover, unconverted men often run to wrong means in order to escape from difficulties, and you will be sure to do the same if your mind yields to the present pressure. <sighs> I am out of shape. Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Your wisest course is to do what Moses did at the Red Sea. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. For if you give way to fear, when you hear bad news, you'll be unable to meet the trouble with what calm composure that prepares for duty and sustains in adversity. How can you glorify God if you play the coward? Saints have often sung God's high praises in the fires, but when you act as if there were no one to help, Will your doubting and despondency magnify the Most High? Then take courage and rely, rely in sure confidence upon the faithfulness of your covenant God. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Wow, this is a lot harder than I thought. I'm having to like make sure I'm staying on point with my line of where I'm reading while I'm watching where I'm going and out of breath because I am completely out of shape. <laughs> Evening. For the people of Israel who are near to him, Psalm 148, 14. Distance and separation were marks of the old covenant, and when God appeared even to his servant Moses, he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet. And when he revealed himself on Mount Sinai to his own chosen and separated people, one of the first commands was, You shall set limits for the people all around. In the sacred worship of the tabernacle and the temple, the thought of distance was always prominent. The majority of the people did not even enter the outer court. In the inner court, none but the priests might dare to intrude, while into the innermost places, or the holiest of holies, the high priests entered but only once, the, once a year. It was as if the Lord in those early ages was teaching man that sin was so utterly loathsome to him that he must treat men as lepers, put outside the camp, and when he came closest to them, he still made them feel the extent of the separation between a holy God and an impure sinner. When the gospel came, we were placed on quite another footing. The word go was replaced with come, distance was replaced with nearness, and we who previously were far away were brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Incarnate deity has no firewall around it. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's the joyous proclamation of God as he appears in human flesh. He no longer teaches the leper his leprosy by setting him at a distance, but by himself suffering the penalty of the leper's defilement. What a state of safety and privilege is, his, is this proximity to God through Jesus. Do you know it by experience? If you know it, are you living in the power of it? This closeness is wonderful, and yet it is to be followed by a greater nearness still. When it shall be said, um, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. Lord, haste the day. That is a very beautiful message and a re great reminder as a Christian that we need to remember, especially when 
we are going through the worst stuff because we have something the Jewish people did not have. We have the fullness of his grace and his mercy and his salvation in a way that is complete. No more waiting. All right, well, that's enough for today. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. Happy Tuesday, and I will try to see you tomorrow for September 16th. This is Sarah. God bless.